Hello, I'm JW. This time we've got a lead, which uh, would be to power some bit of equipment, and it comes with this uh, fairly common style of connector on the end to connect to whatever you would want, and on the other end, something that claims to be a UK plug, but in reality is very far away from that. So let's have a closer look at this end. So here we have a what looks like a fairly standard lead here. And this end, a uh, fairly common thing there, fits in a variety of different appliances. Marked on there, 10 amps, 250 volts AC. Nothing uh, visibly wrong with that one. And then we've got some flex here, which uh, is a relatively thin size as these things go. It does have some markings here, which uh, may or may not be correct. In fact, they're probably almost certainly incorrect. So what I've got then is XD, power cable, PVC, 3G or 3 cores there. 0.5 millimeter squared, and then we've got uh, U and 2005, and that is pretty much it. Now, this physical outer dimension is about right for 3 gore 0.5 millimeter square flex. However, the straightaway is a problem because even if it was 0.5, that is not rated for 10 amps, it's actually only rated for about 3 amps. So, even if that was true, which it isn't then this is still a fail because there's no way this is actually going to rating carry 10 amps through there. And the main problem then is when we get to the end here, and then we have this horrid thing. Now, if you've actually got any of these things in your house on any of your equipment, then what you need to do is to get these and throw them away immediately because these are dangerous in a whole pile of ways, and that's before we even get to the undersized flex. Now, this may look like a UK plug, but it isn't in a whole load of ways. And if we bring in a normal sized UK plug here, you can see that there's a dramatic difference in the size here. This is the actual proper size. And important features of this mean that they've got to have a certain amount of space here between the edge and where the actual pin is. And again, there's supposed to be sort of minimum dimensions on all of this. And you'll see this one falls way, way short because there's almost no space here on the two edges. And uh, again, the uh, whole physical dimensions of it is massively smaller than this one over here. And it's not just this plug, they're all uh, basically in that same sort of size realm. There's another one. And if you look at this uh, somewhat damaged plug here, which we've seen in a previous video, again, the uh, size difference is obvious. In the middle here, it claims it's 10 amps, 250 volts AC, the same as the other end. It also has a CE mark on it. Now this is completely wrong because uh, even if this CE mark was genuine, plugs do not have CE markings on them because uh, CE marking does not actually apply to UK plugs. So any plug with a CE mark on it that's claiming to be a UK one like this is a pile of garbage because no genuine UK plug will have that on there. Got the uh, L, N and E markings there and the Earth symbol. And then we've got this thing here that says XD, whatever that's supposed to be. And a number at the bottom, XD308. The back is just this sort of textured uh, material with a little hole in it for some reason. And that's uh, pretty much it. Now the biggest omission from this thing is that there is no fuse in it. So this is where the fuse holder would go in a normal plug. So this one's actually somewhat damaged. It came in a previous episode. And what's supposed to go in there is a fuse of this sort of dimension. This happens to be a 13 amp one and they come with this little plastic piece, and that will press in to the front like that. Now, if it's a plug of this sort of style, where the one obviously you can wire on yourself, then these also have a fuse, and have a quick look inside. There's the fuse inside. It happens to be a 5 amp version. But nevertheless, all BS1363 plugs do have a fuse in them somewhere, and that's actually part of the standard as well. Now this thing does not have a fuse, so essentially the only protection this is going to get will be from the circuit that it's plugged into. In the UK that's typically going to be a 32 amp circuit, so uh, aside from this thing not being able to carry the 10 amps, even if it was 0.5 square millimetres, you could potentially overload this to an extremely high level. And the other problem with having a 32 amp circuit breaker there is that if there was a short circuit here, the available fault current is going to be very high and this thing is not going to be having any kind of protection in there whatsoever. Now, as well as all those massive fails, which of course make it extremely unsafe, if we have a look at the pins here, this one on the right, this white one, is the correct size. We can actually see that the pins themselves are actually too small, certainly in the width there. You'll see there's a considerable difference in the dimensions. And in terms of the length of the pins, 
well guess what they're actually short as well so this one's right up against the plug here and you can see the other one there's a clear gap on this side and if we compare the earth pin which should be longer and in fact is longer in this case yeah once again it's too short you can see a uh, right finger underneath there in the gap and while we're on the subject of the earth pin note that the earth pin has some sleeving on it this is incorrect only the line of neutral should have sleeving Real plugs just have a solid metal pin all the way through and have the sleeving on the line in neutral. Now the reason the earth pin is longer is that when it goes into a socket that goes in first and in many cases that's used to open the shutters for the other holes so it has to be longer and the reason it doesn't have the sleeving on it is because first of all it's unnecessary there's no actual uh, voltage going to be on this in normal operation but uh, in many sockets the actual earth contact is near the front face of the socket so as soon as you're putting the pin in it's making contact with that so imagine this screwdriver was the contact in the front of the socket because it makes a connection when you put it in but of course with the sleeving there it's quite often in many of these that it'll end up actually gripping onto the plastic bit so even though this has an earth pin in plenty of outlets if you put it in there it's going to actually grip on the plastic so you're going to have no earth connection whatsoever the other two pins are arranged the other way around, so the contact for those is normally fairly deep in the socket. And the idea there being that when it goes in, it only makes actual electrical connection by the time the whole of the metal piece is fully covered within the socket. So that is correct there. So in summary then, this thing is extremely dangerous because it's the wrong size. The pins are too small, so they're not going to make a very good contact in the socket or even could cause damage if they're not the say, correct spacing or whatever else. There's no fuse inside here of any kind, so it's just going to be uh, basically running on the 32 amp circuit, mostly common for socket outlets in the UK. So physical dimensions are wrong. A sleeved earth pin at the top here. And really, if you've got one of these, then you need to actually get rid of this immediately. And by getting rid of it, I don't just be putting it in the end, I mean getting a big hammer, smashing the front off of it, and then slinging it in the garbage. Now, as we've done on the leads in the past, let's just check the resistance of the wires within. Now, this claims to be 0.5, but to say even if it was, then it's still a fail because 0.5 is not rated to 10 amps or even anywhere like it. But uh, in reality, it's fairly likely this is not going to be 0.5, or if it is, it's not going to be made of copper. So let's just see what we've got here. We've got the uh, two leads here, and we'll just check for the three conductors. Now, this is the uh, earth connection here, so let's at least see if this is even connected. Well, it is connected, so I suppose that's a start. But of course, with that sleeved pin, it may not end up being connected when it's in the uh, actual piece of equipment or in the socket there. So resistance-wise, So we've got the region of 1.3 ohms, so 1.319. So again, well over 1 ohm in just a single conductor. This is a very short piece. What you see here is the entire length of the thing. So absolutely huge. Let's check on the line here. So let's go on to the line conductor there. This is handily marked with L, N, and E as well, which is somewhat unnecessary, but there we go. May have at least one redeeming feature. So line conductor is 1.111, and there's a fairly implausible reading. Oh, there we go, 1.110. So again, well over 1 ohm for the line conductor. And the uh, neutral one over there, again, just check that one. So there we go, 1.345. So aside from the fact that these gigantic values are completely unacceptable, they're not even consistent between the conductors, so yeah, so the 1.345 for that one, and we'll just check that line again. Yeah, so again, 1.111, maybe zero, depending on the exact uh, thing there. So inconsistent values, so there's no quality of uh, manufacture there whatsoever and of course these values are much too high so again if you connected this to any kind of even a small load you're basically putting over two ohms of resistance in series with that load and of course uh, high resistance in series with anything means you're going to get a significant voltage drop and most importantly a whole load of heat wasted away in the cable which is going to result in this thing getting exceptionally hot melting or even setting on fire 
Now, if you've seen in the other videos, these are actually new ones. I uh, replaced the uh, old connectors because inexplicably one of them uh, decided to break right where it's connected to the uh, actual clip pieces. So, anyway, yes, they are new wires, but the uh, meter, of course, is the same one. So that's an example of an extremely dubious power lead. And as well as the very small flex, of course, the plug on the end here is the real problem. No fuse, wrong size, sleeved pins where they shouldn't be, and all of the other issues we saw there. So if you actually have any of these or have seen any of these around, then you need to get rid of them immediately because these things are dangerous. And they're typically supplied with bits of equipment you get from uh, dubious online sources, such as uh, the usual suspects, sort of eBay and Amazon and whatever else. And quite often it's things which have come in from abroad no checks have been done on them whatsoever, and ultimately this kind of thing tends to get through. So uh, definitely an unsafe item. And if you put any current through this, it's going to get extremely warm, even at a low load, and extremely hot and even burny at anywhere near the 10 amps it's rated for. And of course we will be testing that out outside. We're going to do that in a future video though, so uh, until then, thanks for watching.